last stand of the Biloxi. The southern part of this country was once occupied by a people called the Biloxi, who had kept pace with the Aztecs in civilization and who cultivated especially the art of music. In lives of gentleness and peace, they so soon forgot the use of arms that when the Choctaws descended on their fields, they were powerless to prevent the onset. Town after town they evacuated before the savages, and at last the Biloxi, reduced to a few thousand, were driven to the mouth of the Pascagoula River, Mississippi, where they entrenched themselves, and for a few months withstood the invaders. But the time came when their supplies were exhausted, and every form was pinched with hunger. Flight was impossible. Surrender commonly meant slaughter and outrage. They resolved to die together. On a fair spring morning, the river ward gates of their fort were opened, and the survivors of that hapless tribe marched forth, their chief in advance, with resolution on his wasted face. Then the soldiers and counselors, the young men, the women and children, and the babes asleep on the empty breasts of their mothers. As they emerged from the walls with slow but steady step, they broke into song, and their assailants, who had retired to their tents for their meal, listened with surprise to the chorus of defiance and rejoicing set up by the starving people. Without pause or swerving, they entered the bay and kept their march. Now the waters closed over the chief, then the soldiers. At last, only a few voices of women were heard in the chant, and in a few moments all was still. Not one shrank from the sacrifice, and for years after the echo of that death song floated over the waves. Another version of the legend sets forth that the Biloxi believed themselves to be the children of the sea, and that they worshipped the image of a lovely mermaid with wondrous music. After the Spaniards had come among this gay and gentle people, they compelled them, by tyranny and murder, to accept the religion of the white man. But of course it was only lip service that they rendered at the altar. The Biloxi were awakened one night by the sound of wings and the rising of the river. Going forth, they saw the waters of the Pascagoula heaped into quivering mound, and bright on its moonlit crest stood a mermaid that sang to them, Come to me, children of the sea. Neither bell, book, nor cross shall win you from your queen. Entranced by her song and the potency of her glances, they move forward until they encircle the hill of waters. Then, with hiss and roar, the river fell back to its level, submerging the whole tribe. The music that haunts the bay, rising through the water when the moon is out, is the sound of their revels in the caves below, dusky tanhosters of the southern Venusberg. An old priest, who was among them at the time of this prodigy, feared that the want of result to his teachings was due to his not being in a perfect state of grace. On his deathbed, he declared that if a priest would row to the spot where the music sounded at midnight on Christmas and drop a crucifix into the water, he would instantly be swallowed by the waves, but that every soul at the bottom would be redeemed. The souls have never been ransomed. <laughs>